Gems, episode seven, part two. Yeah. Okay, we had to split this one up into two parts. We explained a little bit in the first episode, but in case you missed that, the reason we split it up into two parts is because some of the ideas that we had and wanted to share were quick side hustles that you can use to get a little bit of supplemental income or perhaps enough income to support your cost of living when you first arrive into the country. We mainly talked about it from like a student's point of view, but really they're applicable to anybody who has just arrived. Mm -hmm. And the second part, we're going to dive into more scalable ideas, ideas that you could maybe even begin when you're part going through your studies like, or you just arrived. And then who knows with, you know, enough luck and enough expertise, you might even be able to turn it into a, a full-time thing. I'm really excited to talk about this because like, this is a subject that I really enjoy. Yeah, the, you know, this is blue sky thinking, which yeah. I, we both enjoy a lot, you know, possibilities. So things that are not necessarily, things, not necessarily things that have been done before. Yeah. So I, uh, yeah, I really enjoy brainstorming ideas like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's some that I've noticed over the years that I've just written down, some I've tried, um, and some I would like to try, but you know, you only have so much time in the day and so much life, so yeah. I don't want to hoard ideas. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> if yeah, someone yeah. can, you know, bring them to life, yep. I would uh, I, I would like to see that as well. Awesome. Let's let's make it happen for our listeners out there. So as a reminder, I'm Mac and I am Ola. And we're here to talk to you about scalable ideas for immigrants. Yeah, let's. Uh, what was the other suggestion you had for the title? For part two title? Yeah. Uh, I can't remember it right now. Unique ideas for immigrants. Yeah. Scalable. Anyways, scalable. either way, Something ideas. Scalable. <laughs> you, yeah. Something somebody would search. So we'll we'll have to figure out. Yeah, nice original title. ideas for immigrants. Okay, original like, yeah. ideas for there immigrants. There we go. Um, yeah, even, even side hustle for immigrants, I think, still works. Oh, yeah. Especially um, if somebody's looking to take that side hustle to the next level, make mm -hmm. it their full time thing. Maybe they want to start small and then grow into it. Yeah. Um, as a lot of these things kind of happen, usually you have like a main gig or you're doing a main thing like studying and then you have some extra time, you put it into a side thing, and eventually it becomes your full time thing, depending on how well it's going. So, yeah, um, uh, yeah we'll figure out a nice title for it. So I've, I just figured it out now. You e found it? Yeah, the first one is easy side hustles for immigrants. Yeah. And then this one is scalable. Yeah. Perfect. There we go. We've got two titles. Uh, easy SEO. To go. <laughs> this guy's an SEO expert. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, let's, uh, let's dive into it straight away. Um, so you had some ideas that you wanted to share with the group. Yeah. Of scalable ideas, something that you can start small, but then work your way yeah. into maybe even turning it into a... a enough income for just one person or maybe even beyond mm -hmm. maybe you can turn it into a company uh, I'm excited to, to hear what you were thinking about uh, so let's begin with the first idea yeah so I actually started talking about that in the last uh, episode before I cut myself yeah um, yeah it's the old cobbler idea yeah um, right now with the internet we are in this age you know where there is globalization um, in the past the only shoe businesses or the real shoe businesses that make money yeah. are in people that produce in mass. Yeah. But now you can produce in mass even if they are not necessarily people that are around you. Yeah. So you can start, you know, if you're good and uh, with making shoes, for example. Yep. Yeah. You can start that. Yeah. You can always always partner with people. You don't need to do it yourself. Yeah. You can find a manufacturer. That's true. Uh, create the designs with generative AI. Yep. It's so easy. Like two, a few weeks ago, I created a freaking avocado chair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Avocado chair. I've been yeah. thinking about this chair for like a few months, <laughs> yeah. and it sounded so ridiculous. And yeah. I woke up one day, yeah. and I decided to just sketch it out. And mm -hmm. it only took me like fifteen minutes to make it with generative AI. Yep. And this thing eventually like. I just posted it, just like, hey, does anyone know how you can bring this to life? Yep. And within five minutes, I had like 20 messages yep. uh, with people saying they want to buy it if I ever make it. Ah, uh, see, so validating that, that idea. Right away, like yep. 20 people were like reaching out, I want to buy this. Yep. And then over the course of the day, more people started reaching out like, oh, I know someone who can do this. I know yep. someone. Yep. Before, you, by the end of the day, I was able to find a few manufacturers yep. that can help me bring the, this idea to life. That's really quick. I was able to find... Yep. Uh, 
people that can do the AutoCAD. I'm not good with AutoCAD. Yeah. Maybe you are because you're an engineer. I had some experience with it going through school like that and SolidWorks and things like that where you can kind of design yeah. specifically what something like that would look like. So um, for context uh, and to make it easier to follow, like your generative AI piece will help you generate the design concept. Right. But then actually figuring out okay, I'm going to need this much material. The specifications. Yeah, yeah, like would it be able to hold this much weight, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, AutoCAD, or, or I'm sure there's other options out there. SolidWorks is the one I'm most familiar with. But it could actually help you develop like an actual yeah. product. Because no manufacturer will you know, accept your yeah, mock-up. Yeah, it's they basically need, like need, a sketch. Yeah, right? they need the yeah. sketch. Yeah. So yeah, that's, um, I found someone who, was able, uh, who will help me do that as well yep. and from looking at it and doing like you know more research I realized this could actually become a business yeah like <laughs> yeah. so who knows I might start I might have a might furniture look, business maybe you have a side hustle right there yeah right? you never know but that's just an idea of what you can do you know if you are someone who is imaginative or you're uh, very you have something that you're super um, passionate about yep. that not a lot of people think too much about whether it's furniture whether yep. it's shoes yep. whether it's clothes yep. the internet is so like wide open that you can find someone in the middle of Italy yep. who knows how to create those things but yeah. don't have imagination in yep. the way you do yep. and you can work with them so that's something you can do and very interesting when you were mentioning some uh, some options there you mentioned clothes as well mm. so I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into that one I feel like that's a very good scalable idea and also one you can validate very quickly yeah. the way you did with the chair in that you can get feedback on designs mm -hmm. online very quickly um, you, you if you're a student especially you're going to be around a lot of people who you're hoping maybe would even be the buyers of your product so you can quickly validate the idea but the clothing is super scalable especially with all of the tools that you mentioned earlier like mm -hmm. um, it's easier to get uh, manufacturers and suppliers who can help you create the actual t-shirt um, there's so many tools online to help you create the designs now especially with this AI conversation right. so you can iterate on design ideas very very quickly get them out validate if something if it's something people are finding interesting you can quickly test it's so easy to set up an online store now with uh, supply um, tools such as Shopify mm -hmm. it's very quickly like you can have an online store and have people like pre-ordering at the very right. least so that you know like you don't have to take the risk of like making like a hundred t-shirts if you're not going to sell that many you can literally take pre-orders and then at the time of like validation you're like okay, i have a hundred pre-orders i can make some profit easily now you can yeah it's it's very easy to, to get started now which is really um an exciting time for people who are first arriving into a country totally agree and uh you know I, well i'm a notion ambassador and yeah. I create templates yep. and last year or two years ago now actually I created um, a template and I just posted a description yep. and just yeah people said they were interested yeah but you know you never believe people when they say they're interested in an yeah, idea yeah. I, in yeah. true interest is money yeah exactly <laughs> so I was just like oh, okay interesting yeah. well there's a link to the pre-order page yeah. if you're really interested there you go buy it yeah and I posted it at 10 p.m. Yep. I was thinking tomorrow I'm gonna wake up and if I'm lucky maybe I'll get one. Yeah. Like you know, but I couldn't sleep well because I was like super excited. No, not even uh, never. So I was like, oh, this oh, is gonna be nervous. cricket. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I woke up the next morning yeah. with uh, my notifications on my phone. I had like 250 notifications. Wow. Of that, people. Yeah. That is true validation. 250 right notifications. And it's oh, just from your network, right? This, uh, not even my network. It yeah, was on a it was Facebook beyond. group. Okay. So these are people that don't even know me. Yep. Maybe three or four people knew me in the group. Okay. These are people, these are strangers. Yep. Yeah, 250 um, paying me, I think, the first 20 people paid $25. Wow. And then after that, it was $50. And yeah, you're like, you know what? And I had not created, I had not even created this thing yet. Yep. So... That, that yeah, it was yeah gives you the motivation to go. Oh yeah, it. then I then I booked off my calendar for like two weeks and just, <laughs> <It> just <laughs> finally created it. it out. I mean, but that said, it wasn't just an idea that I just created, you know, out of just delusion. Yeah. I knew I could do it. Yeah. I just wasn't prepared to do it yet yeah. without any validation because yeah. 
you know, once bitten, twice shy. Yeah. I had a business before that failed because yeah. we didn't validate it well. Yeah. So now everything starts from validation, validation yeah. which is why this podcast as well. Yep. We haven't bought all the fancy equipment. No. We haven't gone crazy it's, with still recording things. recording on phone right now. Because yeah. you want to be sure if you all are interested in yeah. this before yeah. we, you know, go too deep into it. Yeah. So please let us know yeah. we need if you're interested. all of the feedback right now. Yeah. Yeah, because it helps us. It gives us motivation to improve it. It gives us tips and like how we can make it better. And mm -hmm. we don't want to just sit here and kind of create something that we think would be useful to just us. It has to be useful to everybody. Yep. That's where that validation piece, I think, is really important. Also, before we move on, I really want to um, highlight a gem that you dropped. Uh, this is a hack that you really dropped, and I think people should make sure to pay attention to that, which is you used a Facebook group. Yeah. That's an amazing way to get a quick audience and quick answers on something. Oh, There's yeah. so many Facebook groups out there with very specific interests. And you can go in there. If your product matches that interest, you can very quickly get like a big sample size to, to validate your idea. So like earlier when we were talking about clothing, for example, if um, your clothing is community themed, for mm. example, like say it's uh, there was a brand, I think when I was going through school, called 709. Oh, yeah. So the, that, that's my like, friends. Yeah. And it's about you know Newfoundland so yeah. like you can go to a group that is primarily talking about being in Newfoundland and things like that and drop that in there and see how people react to it who knows maybe that's like your next big thing oh 709 was very much like in behind the scenes like yeah those were those were my friends like yeah. I we would spend so many nights brainstorming ideas for that yeah. brand thinking about how to yeah get it was exciting launch. seeing how you know it, it went from this silly idea yeah. to you know something people start wearing yeah, it, yeah it, that was an exciting time uh, and it was inspiring for me as well no doubt no doubt another example i have of clothing that worked really well um was east coast lifestyle do you remember that yep alex mac um uh, yeah I think, yeah and that started as a as a student's kind of project yeah you know but once the the product was out there and people had the ability to i'm not sure if he did pre-orders or not but he was just selling out of the car for the longest time. Um, they have a podcast. There's a really interesting podcast. I'll share this link with you as well. Maybe I'll put it like, but it's talking about how he started the brand. Oh, and, nice. And it dives deeper into like the scrappy way you can begin something, just selling things out of the back of like your, your car or like of your house or something like that. And then once you're starting to see things actually move, mm -hmm. then you can maybe move it online and then start to fulfill orders and, and do things like that. So it's yeah you can start small but then once you're starting to notice some momentum with it that gives you the validation to maybe invest more time and more resources into it a little bit more so you can see it go go somewhere far and who knows yeah. the sky is the limit like blue ocean idea <laughs> yeah open sky idea yep. as I mentioned earlier um that the, 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 there's no end to it it just depends on your creativity i totally agree before you even reach the validation step the step that i want people to know because i it took me years and years and years to learn this yeah. and i if there's ever anything you take away from me yeah. don't come up with an idea solve a problem yeah. find yeah. a problem find a pain point people have yeah this thing that i mentioned that you know that i posted and you know it got pre-orders and yeah. i made money yeah. It, that was, it didn't start from an idea. Yep. It started from a problem that I noticed that at least like six, seven people yep. were saying the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. And that validation was just more like, okay, seven people are saying this. Yep. Now, how many more people yeah. have this problem? Exactly so right. the validation is more of you just, I don't know, increasing the volume yeah. of the pain points that yeah. you noticed. Yeah. It's not, that's not where you should start. Don't come up with a like this is a genius idea yeah. i think people should want it they yeah. might you might be lucky yeah, yeah, it yeah. happens it does happen but that's actually taking the hard way the easiest way is find a problem people have and uh then give them the solution to it and yeah. they will pay you for that yeah and so how did you come across that problem early on yeah so that one was an interesting one because um i was always hanging out on clubhouse yep and then people will be asking all these questions yeah. So I was always answering the questions. To me, it was like, this is common sense. Everyone should know this. Yeah. But then after a while, I realized like, oh, wow, this is not common to a lot of people. Yeah. It's only common to me because that's my daily reality. Because, yeah. you know, I worked in SEO and SEO was a foreign language to people. Yeah. So, yeah, that was just it. It was just, I just paid attention yeah. um, to people's complaints. And that's the thing, you know, 
I that was also the time where I was trying to complain less generally in life. Yeah. So when you have it in your mind that I don't want to complain, yeah. the normal things that will piss you off that oh why are people complaining about things? Yeah. You start looking at it from, huh? What can I do about what people are complaining about? You know, yeah. you start turning the complaints into gifts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you start yeah. like, oh, this people are handing me gifts because even if they complain about you yourself, it's a gift for you to improve. Yeah. If they complain about That's problems feedback. in their life, yeah. yeah. And for you as well, if you notice that you complain about something over and over again, it's yeah. an opportunity for you to step back and say, either you solve it or yeah. find someone that can solve it for you. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah, but get rid of the problem somehow, right? Yeah, exactly. Even the, this podcast came from that. For me, it was like there's no representation of people like me in yeah. tech. Yeah. Uh, how can I? What yeah. can we do about how it? Can you normalize it? More? Yeah, how can I even normalize yeah. it? You know, like uh, I went to Afrotech and I saw like 20, twenty-five thousand people that were just like me. Yeah. And I'd never seen that, or I didn't even know that existed. Of yeah. course, you think if you really crunch the numbers, you would like okay, there should be twenty-five thousand black people in tech. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I never was around that. Yes. And yeah. I went there and I never felt so inspired. And not everyone can make it to Afrotech. Yeah, so that's true. This so is, there's more. This is, yeah. yeah. So this is one way to, to get people to see that there's more of us. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's normal for us to be in those spaces and things like that. Yeah. Because I, I think it can be really daunting like um, for all, all except the last startup. I was the first person who was like not from Canada to join. Uh, so it was oh, wow. always kind of like, am I in the right space? <laughs> you know, you yep. always have that little bit of self-doubt. Imposter syndrome. I, I saw it a little bit when I was in engineering, but the companies that I worked with were, were usually a, a bit bigger. Mm. So typically nobody in the same team, but you know, you see one or two people within the same company at least. And you're like, okay, there's some, there's some people around. But in tech, especially when I was getting started, and in Newfoundland, I really did not see that diversity there. So you, you start to feel like a bit of like a one-off. Mm -hmm. But then you go to something like Afrotech, and full disclosure, I didn't go there. I want to go there. But <laughs> I want to go next time, maybe. Uh, but you go to something like that, and it, it shows you there's a community of us. Yep. And we can support each other, and we can share tips with each other. And together, we're stronger, you know? Yeah. yeah. And that was also another thing uh, from talking to, oh, I was talking to some guy at Afrotech. Yeah. He, he, um, he ha he's studying com a master's in computer science. Yeah. He's so much more smart. He's so much more smarter yeah. than I am. Yeah. And he had no confidence. Yeah. Like uh, my company that I uh, was representing yeah. was recruiting. Yeah. And he came up to us and he was like, oh, this is my resume. Uh, can you, can I get a job? Yeah. I was trying to apply for an internship. Yeah. I was like, dude, like, internship is like you're trying to sneak into the window, into the building. Yeah. You should not be doing that. You should be breaking into the door. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you are, like, you have all these exciting projects, you have yeah. masters. Like, no, you, like, they. You belong here. Yeah, you belong here. Yeah. He's like, oh, really? So we had, like, this nice chat. Yeah. And then by day two, we showed up. He was a completely different guy. Yeah. His was. confidence was like way sky high. Yeah. He was like, "Oh, dude, I got, uh, I already got an interview from Facebook, Google, cool. Apple, wow. like, yeah. like all the big companies that were at yeah. the conference." Yeah. And even I was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. And that was the light bulb moment for me that sometimes all people need is just that uh, switch perspective. Because they were, I'm sure he listens to other people that yep. you know tell him things to do yeah but looking at someone you can relate to yeah someone that looks sounds like or you that's someone who has like, done what you're trying to do yeah it's, and it just made him it switched in his head yeah. and that inspired me in turn as well so yeah it, it, it makes the whole thing a lot more realistic in a way exactly once you have that like you have an actual conversation with somebody who's like done this and, um that's why people have always recommended mentors as well yep. like if you're trying to get somewhere Find somebody who's just got there or somebody who got there very recently yeah. and, and work with them and they'll show you that it's real and it's attainable and you can, and you can do it. So tying it back to like the original subject matter. We'll dive like, into uh, mentorship uh, yeah, at some point in we'll, the future. Yeah, we'll do a whole thing on that. Yeah. But like to, to quickly tie that concept to what we're talking about today is like if you ha have seen an example of somebody turning a side hustle into their full-time gig or you see somebody who found an opportunity in the environment that you're in mm. and manage to make something of it it's a great idea not only like to to communicate with them but like see what you can learn from mm -hmm. them as much as possible ask them to be your mentor talk to you through your ideas help you validate your ideas get you get you somewhere where you you have like some momentum and it, it'll keep that 
energy up for you because like er- early on when you're trying to start a business a side hustle whatever there's a lot of hurdles oh, so yeah. it can be really easy to lose um, the motivation to do it yeah. but if you see the goal line and that goal line being like an example of this having been done before it really makes everything seem way more attainable it's not something that's like off in the distance you can't even see it you you can very clearly see the objective i totally agree and um <clears throat> to be honest it's no we'll keep that for the mentorship <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about we'll that, we'll the keep that for the mentorship yeah yeah we can talk about that one at a different time but perhaps we can dive into some common problems that we're seeing so to share some ideas that some people might be able to explore even further um one one thing that you you mentioned this already in the in the previous one but i think it's an opportunity is the expense of books mm-hmm. like if you can find a way to get books to people for a much cheaper rate than what like say the university will sell them to yeah. i think that has the potential to scale that can be tricky though cuz um you can't buy the book and sell it at a cheaper price yeah and not, you can't not at the, not at the university cuz like then there will be no margin yeah. but what if you found a different way to attain the same book for a lot cheaper like by shipping it in or something oh, like yeah, that oh yeah 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 that could be a way for you to yeah. make like the difference in in cost cuz usually there's like a pretty big markup mm. at like mm. school True. at the school shop so like whatever is needed like if it's like a certain edition book yeah. you could probably get like either either like a previous edition book or the same edition but like for a ch- uh, like a cheaper price online and then share it with the people who are in your class for example or something like that open a bookstore in a university town yeah basically <laughs> well, right? you don't have to open a bookstore you can start by just you know a small quantity small quantities here and yeah. there maybe you're taking orders from people and then you're making it happen for them they're happy they yeah. don't want to look maybe to find everything but you can help them out that way so that that's like one problem for people yeah um another problem for people that i notice is like finding their community so oh, yeah. like in terms of monetizing this this might be a little bit more difficult perhaps like that that clothing idea might tie into this where you're creating a community around that but communities of of similar interests yeah. usually a lot of people who go to university are away from home for the first time it's mm-hmm. like a scary situation and you want to find people who are like have similar interests to you and you're trying to make friends it's very much a social experiment so i see it as an opportunity um i don't know how i, I don't know if i can call this like scalable necessarily but over time perhaps it could be but early on like if you're n- notice like, say you like really enjoy i don't know um video games or something like that mm-hmm. and you know that there's other people who really love that as well and y- you want to meet up with them and have conversations with them and and plan events for them and things like that go ahead and start that before you know it you have a community of people surrounding you who want to support events yeah. perhaps like you start charging for events like you you were mentioning in a, in a previous idea um and all of a sudden you've got like you've got this means to make money every mm-hmm. now and then um that is also scalable because that interest doesn't necessarily die with you being in university um and you can get people who are out of school and things like that but um i keep indexing to that time because i think it's like it's it's where you start thinking about side hustles and things like that oh, that's yeah. why i keep mentioning universities yeah for me i wasn't trying to think about side hustles then i was just trying to survive <laughs> yeah just trying to make it yeah and yeah. then you know that ended up building this muscle that i just haven't been able to turn off since then i've yeah. all, i've had a full time job like lord knows how many years yeah. but i just always this is a side also well, yeah. but except it's not really a business right now it's yeah. just a passion project yeah. but the point is that necessity to keep starting something staying creative yeah to stay creative but yeah so another one that i've been thinking of is culture trips Oh, okay. So a Tell lot of people more. always asking me like, "Oh, when next are you going to Nigeria? I'd yep. like to come with you." I was yep. like, "Why?" Yep. <laughs> I yep. just I'm sarcastic. Yeah. They're like, "Oh, you know, Nigeria is so fun. I I see all these things. Afrobeats is nice." Yeah. But you yeah, I don't know. I wouldn't be able to go there by myself. I yep. I don't know anywhere. Yeah. I was like, "Well, if you then I'll joke like, you know, if you want to come, you'd have for me to be your tour guide, you have to pay me." Mm. Like, "Okay." Yeah. I was like, "Oh, for real?" And then I've been like slowly testing this, you know, to gauge the interest i've yep. done a bit of research as well yep. and this is something that actually yeah. is scalable That's and you don't have to be even the one to do the tours traveling with people during the tours doing yeah. everything yeah. you can have friends or family or yeah. a 
connection. People that yeah. you pay back home that you can trust, of course. Uh, safety is the number one uh, factor. Yeah, you can call up, you know, have people that work for you. Yeah. Um, get uh, security for people, get transportation, yep. organize the accommodation, yeah. um, plan the itinerary. Like you could do, yeah, you could create culture trips for people to yep. uh, in, in a place that you are familiar with. Because mm -hmm. this is not the same as some generic travel agency that have never been to the places that they're recommending people to. Like exactly. you're taking people to the, to the, like the raw, yeah. authentic Experience. experiences that, um, that only someone from that place yep. can know about. Yeah, and yeah, that's a really good one. Yeah. yeah. And it's scalable, you know, you do it Very much before so. you know it, uh, you don't, uh, the volume, yeah. you are taking so many people, yep. you're doing across different states and wherever you're from. Yep. And if you're really good, you can start branching out to other people, other places, hire yep. locals. And yep. I don't know if you're from France, you yep. can hire a local in Brazil to have a branch of the same company. Yeah, but doing tours in Brazil. So that's one. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that? I have another related idea. No, I, I like that idea a lot. Um, I think part of what we talked about in, in a previous ep episode was like being an ambassador for your culture yep. in like a new place that you go. Mm -hmm. And this ties in very nicely to that because like if you're noticing people are showing interest in your culture and they want to learn more and they have the means to travel and things like that, like why not enable them because they're enabling you at the same time and you know you're able to provide them that that unique experience you know a lot of people haven't what you take for granted a lot of people is like very uh part of my plan here foreign you know <laughs> <laughs> new to you exciting to others exactly yeah, yeah yeah but yeah uh yeah culture trips um if anyone wants to do that um and you're interested i have a bunch of notes on this yeah um but like i said i have all the ideas that yeah I don't think I'll be the one to work on this one, yeah. but I'm happy to uh, yeah, sure. share what I know. Share with the community. Um, so the other one that is related to this is localization. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Yeah, so businesses like Uber, yep. they would want to launch in a country, yep. and they don't know the, the environment the well. Yeah. And they can they don't always know who they can trust yeah. in those places. Mm -hmm. So one, then they go and they bring some guy from here, yeah. there, and then they they don't do the right things. Yeah. They, it just doesn't work. Yeah. And um, on the flip side, the companies that, like, there's Bolt and Uber in Nigeria, for example. Yep. Bolt is kicking Uber's yeah. butts in yeah. Nigeria yeah. because they know the market. Yes. They know people's challenges. They know, uh, last time we had Nene, yeah. he talked about that too. Yeah. Like, you know, that's why he wanted to go home and spend some time. Yep. You want you need to know the culture yeah. because uh, yeah the challenges people have there they gonna be different. Uh, completely different. Yeah. So Uber here is not the same as Uber in Nigeria. You have to look at a lot of people don't even have you know they're not bankable. Yep. You have to uh, exactly. look at cash payments. Yeah. Uh, you have to start looking at things like um, mobile payments. Mobile as well. payments. Yeah. Uh, some yeah, just so many things that you can't even imagine right now. Yeah. And I'm I'm from Nigeria and I can't even. Yeah. remember you some be, of the challenges you'd be there because I'm not there, there. Kind of doing it yeah so that's something you can do you could be like the localization expert for any company yep so instead of working for uber and going to do that yep. you could literally just be the guy or a girl yep. from here or any in between yeah you can be you can move there yep. for like six months a year yep localize a company yeah Airbnb Hoover help whatever expand do there. that help them expand for six months build the base come back here yeah you know like so a lot of people have the dream of living six months here six yeah. months yeah 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 where uh, in a warmer climate yeah. that's something you can do yeah go work six months down there yeah. in the warm month yeah and then come back here yeah and I think that's, that's a, a good very idea. good opportunity that yeah. you can you can do yeah for sure uh, I actually went down the road of of um, a similar road like this very recently mm. um, a couple of years ago um, I'm, I'm still primarily like really interested in this idea but I'm happy to share it because I think it's a problem that needs to be solved yeah. um, and I don't really care much who solves it I, I just hope that it gets worked on very quickly which is um, energy so I don't know about Nigeria but back home in Tanzania Energy is a big challenge for us. Like to this oh, yeah. day, we're still doing like energy rations every now and then. Yep, Nigeria. We are primarily hydro, and that's very um, reliant on the environment. Yeah. And if one year you're not getting as many rains, that means you're getting more rations. That year, <laughs> that's just what it is yeah. for energy. So the opportunity that I saw was solar. So 
we have a lot of expertise here mm. that is solar related, but what we don't have is year round exposure to the sun. Right. In Nigeria and Tanzania, African countries, tropical countries, like not just in Africa, like around that bend, like that's uh, around the equator, there's a lot of potential for this, but there isn't the expertise. Right. So you can be the bridge between the two. It's like the projects all exist in these other countries that we've mentioned, mm -hmm. but the expertise exists somewhere else. You can be that localization expert to yeah. find projects and then bring them back and create around that project. Maybe you facilitate um, the people who would be installing and making sure that they're trained, um, facilitating uh, the import-export process of mm -hmm. all of this. And you, yeah, you could play that role, essentially. The, it's, um, I totally agree. Uh, similarly, that's what like Akon did um, yeah. with his yeah, Light, yeah. Light Up Africa uh, initiative. Yep. But just the, even more broadly, the whole idea arbitrage yeah. thing is huge. What well, you mentioned something that resonated saying um, when you said the expertise, you have the expertise here, but yeah. you can't necessarily do it here. Yeah. But then down there you can. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you can just take ideas that work here, yeah. but don't just take the ideas that work here and then take it to your own. You yeah. might not always work, different culture, yeah, different sure. everything, yeah. but use that as an inspiration. I'll give you a great uh, a one that I noticed. A lot of, in when I worked at Tim Hortons, yeah. uh, Ice Cap was very popular. Yeah. People loved Ice Cap. There's a lot of Nigerians that leave or Nigerians that leave wherever they lived, yeah. in Canada, UK, whatever, and they liked those things, yeah. and then they go back home, they, there's They're nowhere there. to get those things. Yeah. So the normal common sense thing would be like, oh, just open a coffee shop. Yeah. But no, that won't work in Nigeria, because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's too hot. Yeah. <laughs> However, yeah. there's so much sun, yeah. you can take ice cap. Yeah. And okay, even if you don't want to do it in a liquid form, yeah. People buy this ice creams like super ice frozen yeah, thing. Yeah, that's that been very huge popular. for so long. Yeah, you can do a caffeinated version of that. Yeah, that's those a, don't exist. Yeah, that's those are that's ice a great creams idea. today. Yeah, that's yeah, a great you can idea. have the caffeinated version of those. Yeah, that's and a really good idea. The last time I was there, I was like, oh, I wanted to do this. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> just there are other things I want to do first. Yeah, that's man, that's a really good one. Um, if anybody out there is listening and is inspired by that one, that's. Uh, uh, that's a wide open opportunity right there. Yeah, and there's so many, there's so many like that. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you another one that yeah. I noticed. It's a when I went uh, Airbnb. Yeah. You know, in this part of the world, you you know how Airbnb works. Yeah. But in Nigeria, I was lucky when I went there. I stayed at my cousin's place. Yeah. You know, he, the place was furnished, everything. Yeah. I had my own chauffeur. Yeah. I had security. Yeah, very easy. I had my own entourage. It yeah. was amazing. Yeah. I was living like a king. My yeah. is king, so I guess. I'm always living like a king. <laughs> Jokes always apart. living the, the, the king lifestyle. <laughs> Jokes apart, though. Jokes apart, though. Yeah. I, it, it was a luxury living. Yeah. And I was thinking about that. I was like, huh, if I didn't have my cousin doing this, yeah. how would my Nigerian experience be? Yeah. I'll go stay at a hotel, yeah. lonely. I'll go stay at a heavy MB. Yeah power issue that you mentioned earlier yeah. on there's no power yeah. barely no security yeah. and you're a foreigner you know you have to be very careful yeah so i was like wait why can't someone just package this yeah That's so a, not just heavy and yeah. you know what i mean like an ex experience. Full experience like yeah. you have your own you go there yeah. entourage in the box yeah you have air, people go that take you to the places it's almost like culture it, trip and you, except more yeah premium yeah, version of the culture version. trip yeah 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 that's another open opportunity for people and all you need to know is like those connections like you you know you had your cousin so yeah. you need like a, a a version of that and you can work together with people back home to create like um those types of accommodations oh yeah you know so that people can go and experience this and maybe they want to experience it as a group maybe they want to experience it by themselves but yeah. you can set it up in ways that facilitates this and makes it a bit safer for people to try and the exchange actually makes this very uh, scalable in the sense of um you every one of those things you can mark them up by like 100 bucks yeah like security yeah mark it up you mark it up and for someone here yeah. paying 400 dollars for the experience of a lifetime yeah is like a no-brainer yeah but down there yeah. all the people that you're paying yeah with the you know what i mean with yeah. the extra that you're making yeah. it's a life-changing money a you can pay someone for one of those engagements, yep. what they normally would make in like eight months. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. like, uh, so it's a win-win for everyone. Win for, for sure. you, you make your profit. Maybe you won't, you know, 
it's not thousands of dollars, yep. but imagine if you could, it's a business that could make you five grand. Yeah. Just yeah. on all you're doing here. You're you don't have to even be there. Yeah. All you're you have to do is do the SEO. Yeah. Just, just content the, and yeah, do the marketing part. Yeah, do the marketing the part. Yeah. So, which leads to another part as well. Yeah. And, <laughs> SEO. Yeah. Uh, you're an expert on where you're from. Yep. The people where you're from, they might not be great at marketing or yep. whatever specialization you have. Yep. The people there that have the specialization, yep. they don't know they anything about those places. There. They don't even have the interest. They don't even know the opportunities. Yep. You can create content uh, yep. as well. Yeah, so, yeah, and everything true. that comes with content, affiliates, links, yep. pre owned products, yep. services, whatever. 100%. These are, these are all great and very actionable ideas. Um, one thing that you you mentioned earlier or something that i've noticed through what we've been talking about so far is we're talking a lot about like things coming from here yeah like for example i mentioned the solar and things like that yeah. and then going there but there's the opposite route as well oh yeah, yeah. So, you would love the next one <laughs> so there's the idea of like um you know you know when tourists go to a particular place for yeah. example and they want some memorabilia from there yep. or something like that um, one major thing from Tanzania that people love to take back is, is what, what's called a, a kanga. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's kind of like a shawl. I it's don't like know a what light, it is, so we have to explain that yeah, properly do, do you, to me as well. <laughs> do, do you know what a sari is? Like I, a, I've heard of it. It's like some people use it as like a way to wrap around yourself. Right. Um, so, some people use it as like almost like a, a lightweight beach towel, things like that. We sell a lot of that whenever somebody comes to tanzania and they tour around a little bit it's a very easy thing for you to bring back with you do you know why um i think people like fabrics from different cultures okay. so i think that's like the main reason people want like even when i go traveling that's one of the e easy things for me to carry especially when i'm going to be lightweight mm. it reminds me of that and it's very useful so it reminds me of the experience and it's something that i use all the time like i i have a kanga myself that i use like when the beach time comes around I'll use that every time and every time I, I lay it out somebody asks me oh, where did that come from where did that come from and it's foreign to people here but it's a very normal like almost everybody back home has something like right. this right so I was thinking what if you brought like an item like a kanga or like um, like locally made jewelry or something like that and you made an online store for it but you're selling it here mm. and you found a way to market it to people and show that interest to people um, especially through things like social media and things like that like, like TikTok for me just like came right to mind yeah. like you could get a lot of eyeballs on something right. really quickly and then validate whether or not something would someone would have interest to that and then you can import that here um, and, and sell it for a market price now they're getting a lot of benefit back home because the many, the people who are actually creating it, yeah. they can sell it for more than they're able to sell it for back home. Yeah, arbitrage. And you're now here making your little percentage of it and people don't have to travel all the way there in order to experience some of those cultural gifts that you might have. Right. Yeah, so I, I think that's a, it's a pretty big opportunity as well, like import-export of, of um, cultural artifacts. That's a great one. Um, I love that. Um, yeah, and there's their platforms. Even if you don't know SEO, you can sell on Etsy. Yeah, that's a ready-made place where yeah. you can start making money from day one. Especially Etsy, where people are already thinking like everything in this uh, marketplace is yeah. creative. Exactly. Yeah, and so, personal. Yeah, and it's easy. You know, your next trip home or wherever, just buy a handful of stuff and just post it and see how it goes. And yeah. you might catch the bug. And use some of the the tips that we were mentioning earlier, yeah. like things like pre-orders and things like that to validate these concerns. So, oh my uh, God. Yeah. I just had a uh, realization. Yeah. The last time I went to Nigeria, yeah. um, I spent 10,000 Naira on groceries, yeah. it's like things that I can bring back to Canada. Yeah. And, and 10,000 Naira, I don't even remember how much it is, maybe $20. Yeah, okay. <laughs> then I came back to Canada and I was traveling. I was, that was when I was moving to Vancouver. Yeah, okay. So I had to get rid of everything. Yeah. So I ended up selling some of those things. Dude, I sold those things. Not everything, like literally like maybe a quarter. Yeah. For one twenty dollars. Yes. <laughs> Marco. Yep. Yeah. That's all. So obviously that was I didn't try to make money. Yeah. In really. That wasn't the point. It wasn't the point. Yeah. But just to show you the idea of, you know, this arbitrage uh, thing. Yeah. Something else that I, I've been thinking of for a long time is also business of food, snack. Yeah. You know, like uh, CPG or what do you call it? Uh, DTC yep. businesses are doing well right now. Yep. 
Uh, I almost worked for a bone broth company one time. That's where the idea came from. Yeah. Uh, from the old interview process, I got to understand their business very well. Yeah. And the entire time, I was, instead of thinking, oh, I want to work for this company, yeah. all I was thinking was, I could create something like this. Yeah. <laughs> but not yeah. with bone broth. Yeah. But like, there's all these Nigerian snacks yeah. that to me, as someone who grew up there, like I loved so much. Yep. And there's so much Nigerians who are no longer in Nigeria. They they crave those things. There's yep. nostalgia. So there's already ready-made markets. Yep. Back to the problem. Yep. I know the problem, and yep. I know that so many people have this problem. Yep. And I validated that when yep. I went to Nigeria and bought this twenty dollars thing and sold for yep. one twenty dollars. Yep. Let's just call it five hundred dollars because you know because it was a quarter pretty yep. much. Yep. So you can actually start a brand that creates. Like, you know what I mean? From scratch, you're not yeah. bringing, you're not importing someone's stuff. Yeah, you're you just recreating create, You're creating it. Yeah. them from here. Yeah. From, you know, with what you have around you. Yeah. Um, there's a company here doing that. Nene mentioned that one time. Uh, yeah. Because that's one of our potential guests. Yeah. Um, like Vansuya, they, yeah. they have the food business, which yeah. is another great side also business. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's, food business is not. Side also. Yeah, that's a full time. That's a full time. Full time hustle. Yeah, but yeah, if you need business ideas, the you can have a ghost kitchen where you don't need to have your own yep. kitchen. You know, you have a location where you just pay and you have everything. Yep. Um, ready for you. You just cook yep. with your own unique flavors, and you can post on Uber yep. uh, or DoorDash or Skip the whatever Dishes, whatever you be. use. But yeah, um, they add. They have this drink. You know, Ibis. It, it, it Berry, I think, yep. and it's the same idea. It's yep. something in Nigeria they call Zobo. Yep. They just made, you know, the version here. Yeah. And the ingredients are not necessarily unique to Nigeria. Yeah. I think you can get the, ing the ingredients are shit from Egypt. I have the leaves there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah as yeah. well. So that's something you can create as well. Just yeah. take something from your home. Yep. And turn it at Red Bull. Yeah, that's came, the same. I was, Red Bull came from that. That's so funny. From like Thailand, I, I think, I actually somewhere. saw an update on them yeah. earlier today. Was it they, Thailand they, or some country? Yeah, like, so they, it was two partners. I think they, they shared 49, 49%. Of, yeah. And there was like two left over for um, the the creator's son. So oh, wow. the partnership was this Austrian guy and a, and a Thai guy. The yeah. Thai guy came up with the recipe for Red Bull. And the Austrian guy was like a marketing genius. He, he like he came up with the Red Bull gives you wings. Yeah. He came up with sponsoring a lot of like the action sports that you see. So he made Red Bull like a, a worldwide phenomenon. But the the recipe itself came from Thailand, and it, it's it. This is the arbitrage discussion that we're talking about. Yeah. It's like you take something that's localized, but then you find a way to make it like to get that mass appeal. And yeah, the sky's the limit. Like Red Bull is one of the biggest drink company. They have like. A, I think over 25% share of mm -hmm. like the energy drinks market, the entire energy drinks wow. market. They own an entire quarter of it. That's unbelievable achievement. But yeah, it goes to show you what's like, the sky's the limit once you get started with something like this. It's interesting. We didn't plan it this way, but the more we talk about this, the more I realize that the biggest takeaway from this is the keyword arbitrage. Yeah. As an immigrant, as a foreign gem, yeah. your weakness is also your strength. Yeah. You are always an outsider. Yeah. But that is your that's, opportunity. That's the perspective, you unique see, perspective yeah, you bring. Yeah, that perspective. You see yeah. things others will not be able to see. Yep. And that's what you need to lean into. Yeah. So yeah, if there's anything you want to take away from this episode is lean into what makes you unique. Your uniqueness. I love it. And I think we should actually end the pod right there because that that's, that's the key. That's the thing you underline yeah. for this entire podcast. Um, and as, as per the usual, if you heard of other arbitrage ideas or any ideas that you know are scalable, some ideas maybe you don't have time to pursue and you want to see happen, please share them um, in whatever platform that you're listening to this to as, as part of the review or something like that. We'll, uh, we'll read every single one of them and yep. we will reply to every single one of them. Spotify has a feature, actually. I've been putting that in the episodes. Yeah. Uh, they have Q&A. Amazing. And they have polls. Yeah. And you have the option to also send in like a recording. Yeah. So... We'll give you the option to do all of those things. Yeah. If you send us, a, if you answer our Q and A, yeah. we will shout you out. Yeah, we'll play it in we'll the pod. If you, you want to send a voice recording, yeah, if you send a voice recording, we will we'll, play it. We'll play it. Um, so yeah, please engage with us, interact. Uh, we want to make this interactive and yeah. fun. Um, yeah. we, we're doing this for fun, so yeah. we want you to have fun with us as well. 
yeah well said all that i had so much fun doing both of these two parts this is like um a, a, a passion of mine is people like self-actualizing and, and using their unique skills in order to yeah. make a difference in the world and i think i think we nailed it with both episodes so yeah appreciate the conversation and thank you to, uh, for listening to foreign gems and we'll see you in the next episode yeah catch you next time